Yeah, I have a, I have a few questions, so I, maybe we can be brief about some of them, but um, how would you define neo advaita? Neo advaita, I would define, and I'm. Um, uh, I could be wrong about other people's definition. I think there is a Wikipedia page on it. I would define neo advaita when the people tend to predominantly speak about the absolute and don't really engage in speaking about the person at all. Okay. All right. Yeah, I've, I've uh, come across that for sure. Hmm. And uh, so you're saying that you, you kind of evolved from from that into integrating the, the, the personal feelings more at a certain point? Um, yeah, that's a, the way you phrased that conversation, that, that sentence is a little bit tricky because if you just, like, like the absolute cannot evolve, the absolute is just free. So it's not like the absolute can evolve but the integration into the person can evolve, so the person can evolve. So I would say I've evolved from my perspective, but I know there's lots of critics out there of me that have say I've de-evolved. <laughs> like, so, um, like, you know, like the preferred it when I just spoke well, more. Yeah, whatever. yeah, whatever ch changed. But to me, I would say that um, my personality feels uh, more balanced and more in line with the realization. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So, um, uh, another thing is this is expansion, expansion and contraction. I, I hear it all over the place oh, yeah. um, on videos. And, uh, now, is this, uh, when you use those words, is a say when you're I don't know for lack of a better way of describing it when you're egoing or whatever yeah when you're really into yourself yeah you're seeking and all that yeah so that you that you think there's an a actual contraction of the body or, or do they mean like a contraction of your focus, or is it both? Or I, I'm not quite yeah. following that. Maybe it's more related to focus, but not. It's not really personal focus. It's just that that which is looking and experiencing isn't limited to the body. Um, but when you're really seeking a lot, then there's so much attention in the body that that expansiveness of what you are is seemingly veiled. Um, but I, I can't really name what it is that expands. Just something expands when there isn't this deep seeking or suffering there. There's this recognition that happens and then this energy expands, your essence expands and it's kind of in everything and feels free. Um, and the body can be contracted. So say if like, if I experience something really painful, my chakras can contract, but it's also got this expansion to it. But when you are suffering, all you can feel is just a very tight narrowness of the person. When you're really deeply involved in yourself, you don't have a sense of that which is beyond. I'm sorry, I can't be more precise in words. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I've heard it. I've heard the, the that kind of language um, on several different people, several different videos, you know. Mm. And I'm just I'm wondering if if there's a and you you kind of described it where you know there's a physical contraction and then uh, a limitedness kind of and it's. Mm. As, as opposed to when you're, when you're not feeling that way. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's like a relaxing and a... Yeah. Yeah, you can experience like deep pain over a subject and feel connected to this expansion, which, I mean, that tripped me up for many years. 
It also made me um, like ignore my emotions in some way because Sorry, like, it made me ignore my emotions, like not give my emotions enough attention because you like you have this shift and yourself kind of feels huge, your essence, that which is fundamental to you, which is always there, kind of feels really big. It's like an expansiveness of this sense of being and this empty looking. And then in that, there is emotions in the body that happen. And these are really important because your emotions and your wants and your needs dictate the way in which this body moves. It's like the way God is moving you. It's the way God is instructing how this body should move. It's really important. But you can kind of like bliss out in this expansiveness of what you are and really ignore the body. But you need to seem to come to a balance of the body becoming more in focus. This is how I established better boundaries. I still have bad boundaries and struggle with it. But not bad boundaries, but it's still something that I have to continuously work on my boundaries. It's, it's yeah. But coming more in contact with the body helps you discover your boundaries better and see where your boundaries are in the moment. So if somebody's crossing your boundary, you can feel it more in the body, whereas you can't feel it in that expansiveness of who you are because that expansiveness of who you are has no feelings. It's just love and total contentment. So if you're really blissing out in expansiveness, you can't really feel the feeling so much. And then if you've already got weak boundaries, it's like a nightmare, like your body just, you know, gets dragged all over the place. So you have to kind of come to this point where you integrate them both. But it's kind of confusing because first you've got to go past the body. So in a way, there has to be a negation of feelings of everything. And then you have to kind of reintegrate it, like living as a human, human life but also being connected to that expansiveness of who you are. So your attention and your energy is really big. And there's all sorts of like um, hurdles to that. Like it's, it's, it's tricky reintegrating it. Yeah. yeah um... But there's also got to, in the beginning, there's got to be the disidentification from it. So, you know, a lot of the time when we get into non-duality, at first it's like not this, not that. And there is in a way, a bit of like pushing emotions to the side to be able to see beyond the emotions, but yeah, it all comes full you, circle. There's maybe a, a, a next stage where you, yeah, where you go back into, yeah, maybe like the story, but it's with the realization that it's just a story, yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, sort of, yeah, it's, it's more a feeling, but it's, um, but yeah, you could say it like that. It's, it's so hard, uh, language, that you get to a point yeah. where the language is just tripping over itself. Yeah. Yeah, so I, yeah th th there was a teacher who, uh, I mean, famous teacher, and, and he has like this three-step process of the... You know, netty netty, and then becoming disassociated with the world and and objects and then and then going back into the world mm. as the third step realizing that it's um that, that you're everything or yeah. something like that yeah um, but it was a definitely like steps yeah yeah i'm sure it's not a so linear like that but um yeah yeah, nice. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Birch. It's always lovely to speak with you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.